decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty, otherwise known as DEMEC. Today, we'll talk about the two parts of DEMEC, donor preparation and donor insertion. Let's start with preparation. In 2008, the donor loss rate had improved to only one out of six. I'll show you all about DEMEC prep and how good those numbers have become nowadays. There are many ways to prepare DEMEC donors. This video focuses on Art Giebel's scuba technique and some modifications that we have made. Step one is scoring. We make a circumferential break in decimase membrane. We either rotate the tissue or the basin to advance this break all the way around for 360 degrees. This break creates the edge that we peel later. We stain so that we can see the break with tripan. And the next step is to remove the peripheral decimase membrane. I love it when it comes off in one piece like that. The reason we remove this membrane is so that we can see the edge, to free up the edge. We free up the edge of decimase all the way around for 360 degrees so that we have an edge to grab and peel. I peel in a specific order. The wider the peel zone gets, the more tension there is on the tissue. Therefore, the first two peels I only take halfway to the center, so there's less likelihood of a tear. After these first two peels, a narrow corridor of unpeeled tissue remains. The peel zone can get no wider than this corridor, so I can peel it all the way to the center with minimal likelihood of tears. The fourth pull, of course, I don't take all the way to the center because I have to leave the donor attached for the next step, which is trephination. After trephination, I remove the outer skirt of decimase membrane, which has a ragged edge and dead endothelial cells. We don't want that on the donor. Notice how the actual donor tissue only has to be touched one time when it's peeled. And because peel 3 was taken all the way to the middle, the donor will separate when the forceps get right here. That's key because I don't risk dragging the endothelial cells on the opposing scleral rim. So here I am partially peeling the four quadrants. First peel is taken halfway to the middle, exactly 180 degrees away, I take this peel halfway to the middle, then I rotate 90 degrees to the side, and this peel has a narrow corridor of unpeeled tissue. Therefore, I can very easily take it all the way to the center with minimal tension on the tissue. The final quadrant comes from 180 degrees away, and I don't want to separate the tissue all the way, so I just take this halfway to the middle. I take the donor then to the cutting block, and I soak away the fluid, the donor follows the fluid and lays flat. Then it's ready for trephination. And then I stain so that I can see my edge, resubmerge, remove the outer skirt of decimase, and the final peel separates right when the forceps get there. We have a donor. If Demek is going to become the endothelial keratoplasty of choice, it has to have a reliable preparation process. Given that many eye banks have a dissect tissue loss rate between 5 and 10% as they are trying to cut thinner and thinner dissect tissue, a DEMEC tissue loss rate of less than 1% is encouraging. This is my percentage out of 412 cases thus far, and other experienced DEMEC surgeons have attained rates that are comparable to this. So why all the trouble? Why was there tissue loss early on? Sometimes these donors tear in half. Why? Decimase will not lift through areas of previous cataract wounds. It will tear if you try to lift it. So one solution is to score inside the cataract wounds. There's not as much room to work, but the donor can be peeled in the periphery just like any other case. The donor is taken to the cutting block and tree find, and then it is peeled just like before, and it should separate before the endothelial cells at the lead edge are dragged on the opposing side. If the cataract wounds are close enough to one another, 
Another possible strategy is the U-shaped score. Simply score peripheral to the cataract wounds in a U-shape. Then one has to be conscious during the peel to stop peeling before going through the cataract wounds. Peel number four cannot be done, of course, because the cataract wounds are in that location. Therefore, on the final peel, caution will have to be taken to avoid scraping the lead endothelial cells on the opposing scleral rim. If I can handle cataract wounds, I'm all set, right? Wrong. If a tongue of Desmase membrane stays down during your peel, you have to stop peeling to avoid a large A-shaped tear on your donor. Notice on this picture drawing combination, these horseshoe tears can be difficult to see. Cautious technique can prevent some horseshoe tears. Particularly adherent tissue will not peel normally. The edges of the peel will lag behind in smile configuration, often with radial stress lines. This is where horseshoe tears usually occur. One strategy, before peeling more from the middle, peel to the left and right of this location. Then when you return to the middle, the peel zone can no longer get as wide as it once was. This limits the tension on the tissue and corrects the smile configuration. But sometimes, Horseshoe tears occur anyway. So what can be done? Well, stop pulling and peel from the other side. But that's not an option when tears come in pairs. Special technique is needed. If the tongue of the horseshoe tear is lifted, the peeling can continue. But first one has to be able to see the horseshoe tear and all that is going on here. Watch what a drop of tripan blue shows us. This tearing process started more peripherally than initially suggested. A partial thickness tear started in these anterior layers, perhaps Dow's layer or perhaps the anterior non-banded zone of Desmase membrane. It took a millimeter or so before this desmetoschesis converted to become a full thickness tear. When lifting the tongue of this horseshoe tear, use counter pressure on the viewing chamber and start scraping peripherally where the partial thickness tear began. With careful peeling, this tear will not extend. The donor preparation can be completed. Here's a case where I found a full thickness tear, freed up its tongue, then when I put a drop of tripan, it became clear that there was a small area of full thickness tear, but a much larger area of anterior lamellar splitting. In fact, during the free up, I severed part of this anterior lamellae. Pulling from exactly in front of the horseshoe tear, the peeling can be safely completed. Then the tissue can be positioned to tree fine away the horseshoe tear so it is not present on the final donor. During Demec prep, a good guide of how to minimize tension on the tissue during peeling and during free up is the line rule. Imagine a line drawn tangential to the portion of the tissue you are working on. If neighboring tissue legs behind this line, you are in violation of the line rule. This adherent legging tissue will put stress on the area you are working on during lifting and peeling and cause tears. Always start with the most peripheral tissue. That way you are always working on Desimase membrane that has minimal tension on it from its neighboring tissue. In this picture, the solid line on the left demonstrates a point that is in agreement with the line rule, while the dotted line on the right would not be a good starting point. You would only come to that valley after first addressing its neighbors.